Lesson 7.10, Word Problem Solving Multi-Step with Fractions. We can solve multi-step fraction problems by using the strategy acted out with fraction circles or fraction strips or quick drawings. We identify what we know, what we need to find, then choose a model to act out the problem. So for a very quick review, the steps to solve word problems are we read the words carefully, identify what we need to find, identify important information, we make a plan, choose an operation like addition, subtraction, multiplication, or division, and then we solve it and check our answer. We need to remember to write fractional answers in their simplest form by dividing the numerator and denominator by their greatest common factor we learned how to do this in video 6.3 that's linked in the description. If we have 4 eighths, we list the factors of 4, we list the factors of 8, and we choose the greatest one they have in common, in this case it's a 4, and then we divide both the numerator and denominator by that number 4. So the numerator 4 divided by 4 is 1, and 8 divided by 4 is 2, 4 eighths, is one half as an equivalent fraction. And if we don't use the greatest common factor, we'll need to divide more than once and create more work for ourselves. Mr. Lee can buy pecans in two third pound bags. He will repackage them into one pound bags to sell in his store. What is the least number of two third pound bags he could buy if he wants to fill one pound bags with no leftovers. So we think we need to find the least number of two third pound bags that will total a whole number. That way there'll be no leftovers if we have a whole number. And we can act out the problem with fraction circles. Here we have two thirds and two thirds. If we add two thirds plus two thirds, we get four thirds and four-thirds is equal to three-thirds plus one-third. So we have one hole here that would be one whole bag of pecans he would make as a one-pound bag, but we still have one-third left over. It's one and one-third. So this won't work. Buying two of these bags of pecans won't work because it doesn't give us a whole number. If he purchases three two-third pound bags of pecans, we now have two-thirds plus two-thirds plus two-thirds. That's equal to six-thirds. That is equal to a three-thirds plus a three-thirds. That's two whole. That would be two one-pound bags of pecans. And we can move a third from here to here and see that it makes one whole, so that would be one whole pound of pecans, and we can move this third to here, and that would be our second whole pound of pecans. So if the pecans come in bags of two-thirds pound and he wants to make one pound bags, he would need three two-third pound bags to do this. Three two-third pound bags makes two one pound bags, with nothing left over. We don't have a fraction left over. It makes two whole. So the answer is he needs three of the two-third pound bags. Remember, when the numerator and denominator are the same number, the fraction is equal to one whole. After a party, there were several trays of pizza left, each with two eighth size slices. Bob wants to combine the slices to make two whole pizzas with no leftovers. So how many trays did Bob combine? So we think two eighth size slices means an eighth and an eighth, that's two eighths. We need to find how many two eighths are in two whole to make the two whole pizzas and we can use fraction circles to act out the problem. So if we have two eighths size piece, pieces, here's one eighth and one eighth, that's two eighths. 
and we think how many of these would Bob need to equal two whole? We have a two eighth plus two eighths plus two eighths plus two eighths equals eight eighths. We have like denominators, so we just add the numerators. And two plus two plus two plus two is eight. We have eight eighths, and that's equal to one whole. We have two eighths, two eighths, two eighths, and two eighths. That equals one whole pizza. So that would be four two eighth size slices. And if four two eighth slices is equal to one whole, well then eight two eighth slices is equal to two whole. That means Bob combined eight trays of two eighths each. The problem stated he had several trays that each had a two eighth slice on them and he wanted to combine them to make whole pizzas. And if you look, this two eighths, and like right here, that's equal to one fourth of the pizza. Two eighths is an equivalent fraction for one fourth. And you need to make sure that you draw the models as the correct size fraction. Two eighth size slices is two eighths. It's two of eight parts. Last week, Emma rode her bike for one and one-third miles each day for four days and then took three days off. Did she ride her bike at least five miles last week? So we think we need to find the total miles she rode to see if the distance is at least five miles and we can model the problem with fraction strips. She rode one and one-third miles each day for four days. So on day one, she rode one and one-third. Day two, she rode one and one-third. Same with day three and same with day four. Now we can add them all up. Our model has four one-whole strips and four one-third strips. We have four whole plus four thirds. And that's equal to four plus a three thirds plus one third. And this three thirds is a one, same numerator and denominator, isn't it? That means we have four, five, and one third. We have five and one third miles. And the question was, did Emma ride at least five miles? And the answer is yes, because five and one third is greater than five, so we know she did ride at least five miles. She actually rode more than that, didn't she? A quarter is one-fourth of a dollar. Tala wants to buy a hamburger that costs three dollars. If Tala has 16 quarters, does she have enough money to buy the hamburger? Well, Four of these are equal to one dollar. This is one-fourth of the dollar, one-fourth of the dollar, one-fourth of the dollar, and one-fourth of the dollar. They're each one-fourth. We add them together because they have the same denominator. We have one, two, three, four-fourths. That's equal to one whole dollar. And we think, well, if four of them are equal to one whole dollar, then eight must be two dollars and 12 quarters must be $3, and 16 quarters is equal to $4, and she has 16 quarters. And the hamburger only costs $3, and $4 is greater than $3, so yes, Tala has enough money to buy the hamburger. Tala rode her bike one-fifth mile on Monday, two-fifths mile on Tuesday, three-fifths mile on Wednesday. If the pattern continues, how many miles will she ride her bike on Saturday? So we can see that we have a pattern here, one-fifth, two-fifth, three-fifth, on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. So we think we can make a table to help us to see the pattern and continue it. We have our days, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. This is the one we need to find. We have the miles. Monday was one-fifth, Tuesday was two-fifths, Wednesday was three-fifths. Do you see the pattern? We have like denominators. 
So we know the denominators are all going to be a 5. Can you see the pattern for the numerators? It's going 1, 2, 3. It's counting up in order. That means Thursday must be 4. And Friday must be a 5. So Saturday must be a 6 for the numerator. So our answer is 6 fifths, but we need to write this in simplest form. 6 fifths is equal to a 5 fifths plus a 1 fifth. That means we have 1 and 1 fifth. She'll ride her bike 1 and 1 fifth miles on Saturday. Now let's use some higher order thinking skills. The question is, how many 3 fifth parts are in 3 holes? So we think we can start with three holes and work backward to find the number of three-fifths parts we can make. And we use models that are split into five parts. So each part is one-fifth of the circle. We take one-fifth parts away from each circle until there are three-fifths in each circle. So working backward, we're going to take away some one-fifth parts to leave the green three-fifths parts. We take them away from this circle, and we're going to take them away from this circle. We create three-fifths parts with the pieces we take away. By taking away two pieces here and one piece here, we now have another three-fifths. We can take away these to create another three-fifths. So how many three-fifths parts are in three holes? There's one, two, three, four, five. There are five three-fifth size parts in three hole. And we were able to solve this by starting with the three hole and working backwards to create more three-fifth size parts. Two-sevenths of Bob's shirt is green and four-sevenths is white. What fraction of Bob's shirt is not green or white? And we think, well, his whole shirt is seven-sevenths. That would equal one whole shirt. Same numerator and denominator is one whole. And we can add the green part and the white part to compare it to seven-sevenths, the whole shirt. We have two-sevenths for the green part, four-sevenths for the white part, we have the same denominator, so we add the numerators, 2 plus 4. That's 6 sevenths of the shirt is green or white. We need to find the fraction of the shirt that is not green or white. And the whole shirt is 7 sevenths, so we take away the part that is green and white. 7 sevenths minus 6 sevenths, we do 7 minus 6 is equal to 1, because we have the same denominator. We know 1 sevenths of Bob's shirt is not green or white. And I'll have images of fraction circles split into different sizes on my Facebook image section that you can print these out to use as models. We're finished with chapter 7, we're going on to chapter 8, and chapter 8 is all about how to multiply fractions by whole numbers. Make sure you understand how to add these fractions or subtract them with like denominators before you move on to chapter 8. Have a wonderful day, and I'll see you next time. Bye!